Okay. Good morning, Sebastian. How, How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Okay, well, thank you. I'm happy to. Uh, we're, we're a company called Booker Lab. We're a spinoff of a 34-year-old company that I own in South Carolina, and I've got family running it now, and so I retired, and I've always been messing with Leslie's and Hammond's. I've collected Hammond's. I'm a bass player myself, but I, I just, I'm fascinated by the, the sound of the organ and, you know, gospel music, soul music, and all that. So I started collecting Leslie's year ago, years ago, and, uh, you know, I looked at them and said, well, man, this thing's great, but, you know, you can't get these parts here and there. So what could, what could you do to, not, you know, make it better? Not necessarily better, but at least maintain the, the, the uh, longevity of it for a few more years because people love that sound. It's like the old uh, Fender tube amps. You know, the, the new ones are great, but it's like they want the old ones. Like the old guitar. Yeah, the old Hammonds. I keep looking at that. It's not a Hammond, but uh, the Hammonds are right behind us. So anyway, we started Booker Lab. Uh, Booker's my middle name, and it was my grandfather's name, and uh, he was a uh, uh, innovator and entrepreneur in Durham, North Carolina back in the day. So he always inspired me. I never knew him. So anyway, I wanted to uh, honor him with the name Booker. So we, we created Booker Lab. And so we're running it out of the big company and uh, Van works with us in marketing and we got some other good helpers there. But uh, you want to hear about the product. So uh, we, we, we kind of looked around the market. We talked to some of the uh, older experienced guys and they're a, a world of information. The Hammond guys, the techs that are around, uh, the players. And we realized that there was uh, kind of a shortage in versatile uh, interfaces. Now, what that means is if my Hammond's wired for a, a Leslie 122, then that's fine. And if I go somewhere and they don't have a 122, then I'm in trouble. And I, I have to call a tech and say, yeah, can you switch it to 147 overnight? And he's like, ah. So, so we decided to make a box. And it, it really goes back to my industrial control days with the big company. It's like, how can we make something that's sort of like a Swiss Army knife? More versatile, got more plugs and switches, you know, and I shouldn't have to call a tech just to rewire, you know, three pins on a connector. So we looked at it, and basically what we came out with was, uh, we call this our multi-Leslie preamp interface. And if you can, uh, I'm sorry, if you can get in on here, we've got multiple Leslie connectors. The 122, the 147 are the most popular. And then the new ones coming out, all the new organs behind me here have this 11 pin connector. And uh, Hammond went to it because it was safer and uh, it just, you know, it's a more locking connector, more robust. So, so what we've got is a box that provides interface to any organ, including a B3 or any combo organ. And you interface to it through one of these connectors. And then we've got a preamp gives you volume, bass, and treble, and a couple of control switches. And then your speed control can be either through a half moon switch, a foot switch, or in some of our boxes, I'll show you, we've even got MIDI control, which means that a, a computer, you know, could decide to change the Leslie speed and send a command to it. So these are real versatile boxes. We're, uh, we're, we're applying for UL on some of our products, and that's a big deal because everybody knows the market isn't that big and UL is expensive. But we've been talking to churches and places like that, and they're, they're concerned about these old things getting hot and setting on fire. And so, you know, if, if we can make a better uh, interface, but it still sounds the same to the people in the congregation, then I think we've done a good day's work. So these boxes are all around three to $400, maybe a little more depending on the features, but uh, very competitively priced, American company, uh, handmade in South Carolina, and we're proud to be here. So our next product, Van will share with me, we took basically the same guts here and we put it in a pedal. So, we're good? Okay, so a lot of people like the, the pedal approach because it can sit in front of you and you can, you know, push the pedal. Uh, some keyboardists like it, some like that half moon switch that you use with your left hand. Uh, personally, not being a keyboard player, I never knew how you hit the switch and keep playing, but they, they're pretty good at it. Uh, we saw a guy slapping a switch one time that didn't have a button on it, and I think his hands actually started bleeding. He was playing that organ. <laughs> That's dedication. But this basically does the same thing the box I showed you, but it gives you flexibility to pedal. And one of the things we're really touting that uh, people haven't taken advantage of yet is the MIDI aspect. MIDI you think of as being I can send a note on to another instrument and it'll sound like an organ or something. But uh, the, all these devices, when you change the Leslie speed, they also send a MIDI signal. So uh, our, our friend OB Dave used to be Ocean Beach Digital as our development partner, a great software programmer, design engineer. We're proud to have him on board as our advisory team and a development partner. So Dave, Dave develops these MIDI products and we can see like a recording studio, uh, at, you know, recording the MIDI events from the switch, recording the raw Hammond sound, and then you can go back and edit it. And uh, I'm, I don't, I'm not a player, but I, if an organ player ever said, I wish I'd hit the Leslie about a half second sooner, exactly. you know. Th chord yes, sir. I always think of the song in memory of Elizabeth Reed, but Almond Brothers, 
Greg Allman's got that thing going, and he uses the Leslie to build the excitement of the song. And it's peaking, and then the guitar solos, and when he hits that fast speed on that final chord, I mean, you can just feel it all the way up through your spine. So that's the magic of the Leslie. Okay, so this is our pedal version, again, and with MIDI, you have great flexibility. So we're trying to get that in there. Um, Van will show us our next product. We, we had several requests from folks that, you know, the old tube amps are great. And I love tubes. My stereo is tube, and, you know, uh, you're almost uh, blasphemous if you preach against tubes. But, well, you know, if you look at the maintenance of a tube and availability of the tube amps today, we said, well, why not build an amp that has the same interface, provides all the same controls, and but it has an amplifier built into it. So, you know, someday we might get into tubes, but that's kind of like jumping into the deep water uh, if you've been swimming with the, you know, the... The, the, the fish, not necessarily the whales, but so we've got a solid state amp in here. It's made by a large OEM uh, stereo company. It's backed with a three-year warranty. Uh, we haven't got priced it out yet, but as you see, it's a prototype. But you know, I was proud to say I made this in my shop. But the net, you know, we got metal coming. This was actually fabricated metal, but the, we'll get it all worked out in the next quarter. And uh, do you think it'll be available? By probably the end of the first quarter, March, March, April time frame. I mean, we're rushing all this stuff. We had a shutdown at the big company due to inventory and a major office equipment deal. And then we uh, had, uh, what am I trying to say, Christmas and December was our biggest month ever with the other company. So I couldn't get anything done, as Dave will tell you. We scrambled to get ready for NAM. And, you know, I'm sitting there at the last minute building stuff like this and telling my marketing lady, you know, you, you got to get this in there. She said, ah, you know, we've already shipped everything. So... So we're trying to get the word out there, and uh, we found that word of mouth working with guys like Juke Fox, and uh, we've, we've uh, had some, I won't call them endorsements, but we got some interesting people using our products. Joey DeFrancisco uh, texted me out of the blue one day because uh, he used one of our amps, and I, I almost want to say, who is this really? No, it's not Joey, you know. But, uh, but so we're having, we're having a real exciting run, and uh, the products like this, people are excited about because they're embracing something new, but yet maintaining the traditional old sound. So I've got one more product I want to show you, and uh, sure. guys, can give me a hand? Yeah. Can, can you zoom in back here, or come in? Okay, I'll be I'll be brief with this one. This is a very exciting product. What what we've got here, um, if you can see me in it, is this is sort of a I would call it a metaphor for the Hammond organ with the Connect Kit on top, and then here's the Leslie amplifier, and that's actually a fake amp. But what we want to show you. Is the traditional six-pin cable that comes with Leslie's, and, and like in a lot of churches and stuff, for the old tube Leslie's. It didn't latch. Um, it had the power in it, which is unsafe, and there was just a lot of problems. And they'd start to hum for no reason because the contacts were just starting to separate. And they weren't built to be uh, plugged and unplugged back in the day. To Hammond's credit, they did the best they could with what they had, and you put it in the church and leave it. So. We you know we gig with them, we take them in and out. So we got to look at the whole cable situation with respect to there's some international, uh, Sweden for one won't allow you in with a Leslie, with a traditional six pin cable. That is why Hammond went to the 11 pin, and we respect the 11 pin because it takes care of a lot of other issues. But at the same time, if you have the six pin installed and you're worried about fires, insurance, things like that, we said why not break up that six pin into three cables, one for power, one for speed, and one for the audio signal. And so we break them out at the, uh, this is called the connector box, and it's at the bottom of the Hammond. You can mount this right next to your existing connector box, run the wires into it, and then three, two speak on, uh, two power con, and one speak on cable. You can't get them backwards, they're color coded, and then you can run 15 foot, 25 foot, 50 foot uh, to your box. Now what we did here was create a little, we first called it the bumper car because we thought it looked like a little bumper on a car, but it basically, saddles onto the two screws that are mounted and you've got your six pin connector there so we we hide all that from the user you can't get shocked you can't uh the connectors latch like i said i'm, I'm going around in circles but we're real proud of it and uh, the cool thing is say you were gigging with this it only takes you five minutes to hook each thing up or unhook them but you get to a show somewhere and you don't have your leslie cable or it's broken you can o overnight uh, speak on you can go to guitar center probably and buy any one of these cables and you know they're not nearly the three hundred dollars that we're used to paying so we're, we're very excited about this, and we've actually applied for uh, a patent protection just because we think it's a neat idea. And, um, and then we've also applied for a um, UL. And as you know, UL is very expensive, and we realize we're dealing with a small market. But at the same time, if, if I don't have UL, it's kind of like, I, why do I really need to upgrade? So we feel like the UL is the insurance package, and uh, so we're excited about that. So 
Anyway, that pretty well wraps it up. Um, you can see we bought some keyboards for people to play. We've got a Leslie that's all tricked out that uh, sounds really good. And uh, I'm just appreciative to be here, appreciative of NAM, and appreciative of all the wealth of information I've gotten over the years from this Hammond at uh, Oregon music community. What about these boxes here? Okay, um, these are different versions of the preamp that I showed you. So this is a six pin connector. So you could like bring one Leslie in and split off to two Leslies if you wanted. Yes, sir. Sort of a split. Same as the box that Hammond made. Yeah. Can, yeah. Well, it's like their power relay. Yeah. Except, except we can do 122 and 147 off the same box. That's, so. That's very good. So yeah, it's it's kind of like if you're already building a knife, then put the corkscrew on it. So, in case the guy gets a bottle of wine. Um, but you know, and, and then if you don't need the corkscrew, we'll sell it just the basic unit. Um, this is a motor control box, and it's part of our uh, series too. But basically, you plug your motors into it. I hadn't mentioned this before. One of the things it supports is called Memphis mode. And I guess some of the players in early Memphis would unplug the lower rotors. And um, yeah, I saw Steve Winwood playing bass with his feet. And I got to thinking, he doesn't want the lower rotors mudding up his bass sound. He just wants to sound like a string bass. So this one supports MIDI, I mean, supports Memphis either with MIDI commands or you can plug a foot switch in. So it's another in our series. And if you notice, a lot of these modules look the same from the front. It's because we've taken a modular approach. We've uh, we said, you know, if I can build this with A, B, and C, it's kind of like a restaurant. Well, if I add D, then now we've got a whole new, you know, a menu item. So the last thing I was going to show you was, was this little guy. Um, he's a 26-1 box, if you know, that's a 147 interface. And um, we've incorporated this circuitry into all our other products. But this guy um, by himself will let you have a half-moon switch that runs on 12 volts instead of the 120 volts. Traditionally, people have been scared of the 147 switch because if the contacts get busted or going through a door, you reach over there and you get shot. Yeah, so, so this, is, this puts a 12-volt signal on the, on the half-moon switch, and it makes it much safer. Um, so we've got all kinds of neat products available. And here's a little feature, these little things we call flex panels. So if you said, I want the MEE option, the main ensemble, I could put a connector there and add the MEE. If you said, I need an AC plug, for to bring you know more power in for this, I could put a uh, you know a plug there. So so we're kind of building, I would call them like Heath kits used to be, or sort of Legos in a way, and we can incorporate different modules to build different uh, systems. So we're just excited. I think that you know we've got a we've got a good thing going here. So I appreciate you, Sebastian. I look forward. To